Hi, this is Rebecca Sackett. Uh, today I'm going to do a few different ways on the design side that I use the timer to improve the user's experience in an app. So um, this one here, I just started on this app, so I've got a long way to go, but um, what I did was when they hit the submit, it submits the form and it goes home. Uh, a lot of people like to have a confirmation of some sort, so uh, some people will do a um, where it goes to the confirmation screen, uh, you can do a pop-up or then they have to click a button. But what I want to do is make it pop up, tell them that you did it, and then make it go away. Uh, and, and then at, go ahead and send them to the screen automatically without them having to click on something. So we're going to use the timer to do that. So what we're going to do is uh, insert a timer real quick up top. And it's not going to be visible, so it doesn't really matter where it is or what it looks like, other than don't put it over a button or anything like that because it'll mess up. So it's a uh, default duration of 60,000. We're going to change it to three, which uh, should be like three seconds. May, may have to adjust that, but that's close enough. On the timer settings here, we're going to have auto start as false. Um, which is what it defaults to. Uh, what else should we look at? On timer end, that's when we want it to go ahead and navigate to that screen. Uh, I'll just send it back home here, it's fine. Okay. Uh, on timer start, we're not gonna do anything. Um, you can do there, you can put an update context on the timer start, but I'm not going to do that. There, there's a couple different ways you can do it. Repeat is going to be false. Reset is going to be true, which that will reset it whenever you come to the screen, basically. And there's one other. What is it called? Start. So this one here, um, let's go over here and do this first. So, and so now we're going to still have submit form, but instead of navigating, because it's going to do it when the timer stops, we're going to change this here to update context, start timer, false, and then start timer true. Just copy that. I do copy and paste it everywhere I possibly can. Okay, and then on this start, we're going to change that to that variable that we just don't. So start timer. All right, so then we're going to add our pop up. So I'm going to go ahead and make this timer um, hidden. So I'm just going to turn off the visible property. You can do the confirmation um, however you like. I normally do uh, like a box that's got some transparency to it and then like a little message or something so I'm gonna do this do it the whole screen and do the you can do where you do the um, fade and add the percentage but normally I just pick like the color I want and then I just change that last little bit to fade it a little and then a quick message so let's just add a label um, your request has been successfully submitted. Good enough. Uh, you can get fancy, do a little checkbox, add a little label to it, all that kind of stuff. But I'm just getting the concept down here. Uh, let's go ahead and make that the background centered. Maybe a little bigger. Good. Okay, so now this and this, we're going to go ahead and group those and we're going to name it uh, confirmation message. Okay. Oh, that, that has to have a border. Hold on. I mean, I wasn't going to try to do a lot with design, but there's some things that just bother me. Okay, we're good. So. And then this, the visible property, what we're going to do is set it off at the timer. So uh, if timer one dot uh, minus 
uh, blank value is greater than zero, then I want that to show. But if it's not, I don't. And we need one other. No, we're resetting then, so we're good. Okay, I think that's it. So let's go ahead and test it. I'm not going to fill in all of these. Just a couple. Uh, if you're going to make stuff required, I almost always do apps that are required. I try to do that like at the end, kind of, because it's a pain in the butt when you're testing to have to fill in every single field every time. Okay, so let's see if this works. So we're going to do submit, pops up, and sends us home. Ta da! Okay. Uh, one other way that I like to do it is a screen that you're not going to send them somewhere and they have the option to save changes. It's kind of confusing for people, I feel. Um, so what we're going to do, I, I do a lot of screens where I have the gallery and then I have the form also on the same screen, especially ones that are laid out for the computer. So we're going to put in, um, I'll just do that. A gallery here and then we're going to put a form over here that is uh, going to allow them to edit um, where they don't have to keep going to different screens each time. So let's do this. And then we're going to set the item to the gallery selected and then we're going to have like a save button where they can actually just edit the changes in it. So uh, this is the edit form item and it's going to be gallery one dot selected all right i'm not going to resize anything i'm just gonna call it good and then um let's do a little quick save button okay doesn't look nice but that'll work and then uh label so what we're going to do on this label is this thing is going to pop up and tell them, hey, your changes were saved. So that way they're not clicking that save button over and over, not real certain. Did it work? Did it not? So um, your changes have been saved. Okay. And I'll give that one a little fill. Oh, no. And so again, we're going to do a timer in here, but we're going to do this one slightly different than what we did on the other one. So, okay, since we used to update context, it's not a global variable, um, so we can actually use it here too, and it's not going to um, affect it. So on this, we want it to submit the form, we want it to save the changes. And then we're going to do that same update context. Uh, what do we call it? Start. Okay, I don't remember what I called it. Plus, start timer. False. the duration. I do not want it to auto start. Uh, on timer end, I actually don't need it to do anything other than to reset whenever it ends each time. So that way if they're going down the line, it will keep going back. So that's the only thing I'm going to do on it. On timer start, we actually don't need anything on that this time. Uh, repeat, no. Reset, true. And start. It's going to be start timer. This is what we call it, right? Yep, okay. And then this one is going to be the same thing where we do the visible property. So visible if timer 
two dot value is greater than zero and true otherwise false. Okay, and go ahead and hide the timer. Okay, so now I selected the first one and let's say I want to change this estimator here. I'm going to put it to somebody else. Okay, and then when I hit the save changes, it's going to give them a little pop-up box that says, hey, that worked, and go away. So I use uh, both of those quite a bit um, because I've found that people, it has the little ants that run across the top and all that, but uh, a lot of people don't know what that means, don't see it, don't notice it, a lot of stuff there. So uh, both of those I use a lot. Um, and I have one other that... I'm going to show you, but I'm not going to actually run it. I'm just going to show you as a kind of, uh, because this is active and um, so I don't want to add it in there. But so whenever you add um, one into this app, it runs uh, a flow in the background. So whenever they're doing, they're creating a new one, they put in the job number and they select the quantity, it runs a flow that creates that. So it duplicates it multiple times and it assigns a serial number and the serial number is a job number dash one, dash two, dash three, depending on whatever quantity they put in. So that's a flow that's running. Well, after that, they have to actually confirm it. And so what I do is whenever they get to the confirm screen, they see this, so it's telling them, hey, your serial numbers are being generated. So the way that I use a timer for this one is I have a timer that is really short, um, what is it, 2500, and every time that the timer ends, it does a refresh. And so it's refreshing the data every two and a half seconds. So um, then what I also have here is I have this gallery that is looking for um, the last submitted one. So looking for the, um, all of the ones for that item. And then I also have something where it's counting those. So it's counting how many are in this gallery. So how many are created that have that same job number. And then I have a hidden label that's telling me how many was my quantity. So basically, I'm looking for these two pieces of information to match. That now there are the same amount that I picked as a quantity. So I picked six, and now there are six, saying that the flow has generated all the serial numbers. And so it just keeps refreshing, refreshing, letting that flow run. It usually doesn't take that long. And so then what this is going to be is instead of it being set off of the timer's value, it's saying, hey, when these two text over here, these two labels I have hidden, whenever they are the same thing, then hide me. So this is running here and they think, okay, it's thinking, it's thinking, but what it's really doing is waiting to say, now that your quantities match, you know, all the, all the items have been generated that needed to be generated off that flow, then um, they'll actually get, um, hold on, I'll turn this on for a second. A little tip here, whenever I want to make something visible real quick, I take the code out of there and put it in Notepad so that I don't have to redo it and remember how to do it correctly. And um, so, okay, so then once those two values equal, it pops up a thing that says, hey, you know, your uh, stuff has been generated and it's all ready. Do you want to go ahead and confirm now? So that lets them go to the next step and start modifying whatever they may need to do on each of those. So anyway, that's one other way that I use this. Uh, I'm just going to put that back. Uh, and also the same way that we did the save changes on this one where um, it popped up off of the clicks. Um, I also can, you can also do that with a checklist. So this one here, when I do it, uh, I'm sorry, a checkbox. When um, this one, I have it set off of whenever they check it. So let me see my on check. Right, it does a bunch of other stuff too, but um, this one, it does. It starts the timer whenever it's checked. So what it's doing um, is because it's flipping through multiple. Let me see if I can show this one without doing anything. 
so it's like popping up a little message each time saying okay you did click on it uh, it seems kind of silly but um, I got people to test it and they're like oh I can't tell if I clicked on it like I'm not sure and yeah it's doing it over here but whenever you get people who don't use computers as much and stuff there's a lot of things that you'll find that um, they just don't notice or assume as quick so they were uh, having a hard time noticing when it was moving to the next step so it's just basically a little okay you did that just letting them know you, you know you clicked on it so uh, that's another way that I use the timer and so that's pretty much it I've, uh, I've a lot of people don't find um, uses for the timer but I I use it mostly for design um, I have I think one app that uses um, the actual like it's storing the time it's a clock in and out app but most of the time if I'm using a timer it is for design purposes so anyway uh, you may have there's about four different ways you can do this but this is just one way that I found useful for the users so I hope it helps somebody thanks